Mitchell. Throughout the evening, we'll interrupt the overseas coverage to review the day and bring other views of this conflict. But first we go to the BBC's breakfast programme in London. Very, very successful. These are the main details given so far by the Pentagon. Hundreds of missions have been flown. The targets were throughout Iraq and occupied Kuwait. They included military bases and nuclear and chemical warfare facilities. The Pentagon says Saddam Hussein himself was not a target. And it said that all Allied planes, including some 45 British tornadoes, have returned safely. Many of the attacks were in and around Baghdad itself. The other bases and missile sites are scattered throughout the country. Eyewitnesses in Baghdad said the attacks came in wave after wave. Sources at the Pentagon are claiming that both the Iraqi Air Force and some of their elite army units have sustained very heavy damage. In his first response, the Iraqi president, Saddam Hussein, said the mother of all battles has now begun. Baghdad Radio said the U.S. and its allies would be taught a lesson. In his address from the White House at 2 o'clock this morning, our time, President Bush said he'd ordered his military commanders to prevail as quickly as possible. Our objectives are clear. Saddam Hussein's forces will leave Kuwait. The legitimate government of Kuwait will be restored to its rightful place. This morning is from one of the Allied military positions in Saudi Arabia from which the air attacks were launched. From there, the BBC's Ben Brown has sent this report. Shortly after one o'clock in the morning, local time, the roar of American planes taking off from Riyadh Air Base. Four of them in the space of just a couple of minutes, then more at regular intervals afterwards. Among the aircraft taking off, AWAC spy planes, the eyes and ears of the Allied Air Force. The noise had already woken up most of the citizens of this city, and few of them had any doubt that this was the start of war. Those still asleep, however, were roused by the daunting sound of air raid sirens. Across Riyadh, people scurried for air raid shelters. Those who have chemical warfare protection suits quickly put them on and kept their gas masks close at hand. Exiled Kuwaitis here took a more relaxed attitude, sitting in this hotel lobby, listening to the radio for news, and expressing quiet satisfaction. Well, it's uh, very happy. Uh, I am Kuwaiti, and I'm waiting for this news long time. And uh, we are happy, and we are waiting for more uh, information what's going on. Do you think that this attack will be decisive in forcing Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait? Well, it should be because I think uh, this thing he asked for it. And I think uh, he will. And what is your message to the pilots who've been flying uh, in on these missions tonight? God bless them. And we thank them very much. Can I ask you what is your reaction to the news tonight? Well, uh, we were expecting that. We, we had confidence in the, all the uh, armies who were at the front. And thanks to God they did it. And uh, I said he did a uh, big mistake and uh, he's paying for it now. Do you think this will force Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait? Well, if he, he, he will be reasonable at the end, at this time at least, he will. But I don't know. I don't think he is... Uh, a uh, very, very sad man, uh, bad man. He is a bad man. I don't think so. He doesn't care about his people. He doesn't care about anything. And maybe he is not in Baghdad now. Maybe he left. Are you then pleased at tonight's news? Of course, I am. Of course. Of course. And this is one of the American aircraft we've seen returning safely to base here. Many of the planes that took off from Riyadh, we understand, were tankers for air-to-air -air refueling. Their part in the mission as vital as that of the fighters and the bombers. Ben Brown, BBC News, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia.